Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Square stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Square is a mobile payment company based in San Francisco. The company markets software and hardware payment products and has expanded into small business services. It was founded in 2009 and launched its first app in 2010. Jack Dorsey was the founder who also founded Twitter. In 2020, the company put 1% of its assets or $50 million into Bitcoin. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 99 billion market cap. They're trading at 220 a share and they have 451 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. The company does have positive free cash flow each year, 100 million to 400 million. Then it was cut in half in a trailing 12 months. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they did have negative net income in 2017 and 18, but positive in 2019 and a trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that's growing rapidly from 2.2 billion to 7.7 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales, below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue, and the difference is the gross profit, and that's been growing each year up to 2.5 billion. Below that is operating expenses, and their operating expenses almost equal their gross profit, so they don't have much operating income. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. Below that is other income and expenses. Companies sometimes make money or lose money outside of their core business, and it has to go into other income and expenses. Below that is pre-tax income, then taxes. They did have positive net income for the first time in 2019 and again in a trailing 12 months. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. And they do have positive free cash flow each year. It's not a lot, but it's positive. The company issued over $400 million of debt in 2017 and $855 million in 2018. I think operating cash flow is a better indicator of a company's financial health than net income. And the way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income and then you have to adjust for the non-cash items on the income statement. They passed through an $80 million depreciation expense. They also passed through $360 million in stock-based compensation. This is an expense that brings down your net income, but it's a non-cash item, so it doesn't affect cash flow. Even though the company had negative net income a couple of years, they still generated positive operating cash flow. Let's look at the capital structure. $1.7 billion of equity, $1 billion of debt. They're 61% equity, 39% debt. Their net debt is negative $1.1 billion. So they could pay down all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $1.1 billion left over. Their WAC is 11.5%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $44 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $34 billion. We divide that by 451 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $75. They're trading at 220, so they're trading at a 192% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street values the company at $64, so they're also saying it's overvalued. So obviously the stock price is not based off of how well a company's doing. It is generally based off of how investors feel a company will do in the future. So obviously investors feel the company's future is a lot stronger than its past, so they're bidding the price higher. No one can really predict the stock price. It can go up to $1,000, it could come crashing down. And I think I was pretty aggressive with their future free cash flow growth, but my calculated stock price is not even close to where they're trading at. 
The stock didn't grow much for a few years, but for the past six months, the stock has done really well. This company has a really high beta, 2.71, so the stock moves almost three times the market. And Square has gone up 166% in the past 52 weeks, much better than S&P 500. The low was 32, the high was 246. And the stock is trading above its 200-day moving average, but below its 50-day moving average. This is a pretty liquid stock. 9 to 10 million shares are traded each day. And almost all the shares outstanding are on float. The big companies seem to like this stock because 78% of the shares are held by institutions. And about 7.5% of the shares on float are shorted. If you invested $10,000 in 2015 when the company IPO'd, you'd have $154,000 today. The founder of the company, Jack Dorsey, owns 11% of the stock, then Morgan Stanley, then Vanguard, then BlackRock. The other co-founder of the company owns a little over 3% of the stock. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average P.E. in the market is 11.3. The median is 14.4. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. There are 320, so investors are paying $320 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. There are 13.0. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. There are 58. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet, and they have $1.7 billion of equity, $1.4 billion of tangible equity, because they have $266 million of goodwill and $69 million of other intangible assets on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity. They're at 18%. They have a really good ROE. Current ratios, current assets over current liabilities. They're at 1.9. They have a good current ratio. And their current assets are 2.2 billion of cash and 700 million of receivables. So the company does seem to be well capitalized. They did have positive free cash flow and they have 1.5 billion of working capital. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 16 companies in the same industry as Square. And if Square has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they have a really bad PE ratio. They're a little better than average in price of sales, a lot worse in price to book. They're doing well in current ratio, ROE, and debt. They are a big company, 100 billion market cap, but they are smaller than average. So to summarize, I have them trading at a significant premium. I rank their free cash flows 5 out of 10. They're pretty low and they're not really growing too much. I rank their revenue 10 out of 10 because it grows so much each year. And I rank their ratio 6 out of 10. They don't have good price multiples, but their other ratios are pretty good. So this is a good long-term investment. This company, I don't think is going anywhere. They have a really great business model and they're really well positioned to be the number one player in this market. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.